Hey friends, welcome back to Mustard Seed Home Setting. My name is Megan, and if you're new to this channel, I wanna welcome you, and I'm so glad that you're here. Today what we're gonna do is go around and I'm gonna give you an entire tour of all of my garden. It's finally been raining, and so everything's been exploding and blossoming, and I'm really looking forward to showing you. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start from this corner of our land. I've shared in previous videos that our land back here slopes down, and so this is the flattest part of our land, and so I chose to garden as much as I can. But this first pot, I planted the spring, they're dahlias, so I have a large pot of dahlias as well as a smaller pot here. I tried putting them on all four corners just to help with pollination and give a pop of color. And then these four pots are, these are St. John wort, which is actually a wonderful medicinal plant. And then this one doesn't look like much, but it's a chamomile. I think it's gonna survive. It has a couple of blooms, but it's also been a really hot summer. So I'm hoping that come fall, it'll bounce back and then by next year, it'll be in full swing. And then this first bed that I have are all basils, red rubia basils to be exact. And then in the middle, I put all peppers. Now you're gonna see this garden grid, which I've shared in previous videos. It's a wonderful water irrigation system that really helps me to save time with gardening. But in each square, you can see that I put two pepper plants. So far, I've had absolutely no issues. Now it is taking a little while for the peppers to bloom. Now these have been giving me some peppers, but my other buds, it's been taking a little bit longer for the peppers to bloom, but I also planted them late and pepper plants usually always take long anyways. Now in this bed, there are some peppers that are growing. I've already harvested from this plant, but here's one right here. And I want to say, let's see if we can find any more. Yep, some habaneros, look at that. And then some red cayenne peppers. We've got some that are gonna turn red hopefully soon. There's one that's already red, I gotta harvest that. I also need to support these. I'm gonna put some supports on here. Oh, this one too. This little guy. Let's see if there's any more. I haven't checked these more recently, so you're gonna be seeing them firsthand with me. And here's another one. Let's see, those are Anaheim chilies. Yep, 
Anaheim chilies. But you can see there's like a ton of little blossoms. So they're gonna fruit soon. Let's see if I can zoom in. And they're gonna start to blossom right here. I see a lot of pepper blossoms, so I have a feeling I'm gonna get a ton of peppers all at once. And then these little cuties, I love these little guys. I purposely bought this. It was a, a seed start. Most of the, the plants in my garden are seed starts that I've started. But this bed, I did purchase a couple of pepper plants from Azure Standard. But I, I purposely purchased this one because they're little, they're supposed to be little mini bell peppers. Aren't they so cute? Look at them, they're not supposed to get big. They're supposed to be small size like that. They're so cute. And then this one is King of the North. I've never tried these before. There's this one. I'm excited to try those. So with this bed, I see a lot of blossoms on the pepper plant. So I'm just waiting for them to blossom. And that way I can harvest as many peppers as possible. But I'll tell you one thing, this basil, I've already harvested, I think twice now, and it just keeps growing so much. I keep freeze drying it and I'm making pesto right now, but the more you harvest, and I did do a basil video on how to harvest and preserve, you should definitely check that out. But the more you harvest, the more it's just gonna continue to grow. If you see these little, like for instance, if I were to cut this off, this one's gonna form a bush, and then this side would form a bush. I mean, they just keep growing and growing. They're beautiful, they smell amazing. They're, they're great for companion planting. That's why I put them around the peppers, was specifically for companion planting. But overall, I think the pepper plants look really good. I'm just waiting for the fruit to start blossoming, but I do see blossoms, so that's good. And then here's another dahlia plant that I have at the end of my pepper bed. And then I also planted three other pots. They were all three of them were peonies, but they didn't pop up for some reason except for this one and it's taking a long time. So what I went ahead and did was I planted these drumstick flowers. So they're starting to sprout. I'm looking forward to seeing what these look like. And then I also planted Lauren's grape, but I don't see any sprouts, so I might have to replant those. And then in these two buckets, I have yucuma, if I'm saying that correctly, yucuma. I love planting in all things. You're gonna see in my garden that I have buckets, I have wood beds, I have metal beds, I have bags, I have green stalks, I have all sorts of different ways of gardening. But the yucama is kind of like, uh, it's a vegetable, but it's kind of close to a potato and it's a lot less calories, but they're fun and I've had success growing them. So I just grew a few in these buckets. And then this right here is a dill that became a volunteer out of the ground. So I just didn't have the heart to pull it. Plus I wanted to see how long it would last because I have clay soil here, which is really difficult to grow things in, which is why I want to have with beds. But I also want with beds too, because it's just easier on my back. But I'm pretty excited because it's been growing and looks like I could probably get some seeds from those. And then in this bed are all green beans. I just planted this and my last video was on harvesting leeks. I harvested leeks out of this bed and then I planted green beans. And the reason I planted green beans in here is because I wanted to fix nitrogen back into the soil. But they popped up really fast. 
One of the other reasons I have enjoyed and wanted to use these garden grids was for square foot gardening. It helps me to plant as much as I can within my space, which allows me to produce more food. Now, what I have planted along the trellis are all green beans, and they're all sorts of different varieties from a silver slicer to Poniente, I'm probably butchering that name, F1 Cucumber, which has been probably my favorite because I've been getting wonderful large size cucumbers and they've been delicious. But I took advantage of every little bit of my space and I planted cucumbers along the entire edge to go up and over the trellis here that my husband built. And what I always try to do is closer to where the soil and the mulch is, I always make sure there's no leaves here just for airflow so that there's less likely of disease and any type of issues with the plant. And then here's a good glimpse of the trellis with all the cucumbers coming down. It is the most prettiest thing ever. But I've harvested quite a bit of cucumbers already. And you know, this year what I decided to do was not prune my cucumbers. And I feel like I'm getting more fruit and the health of my plant has been better. So that's just something I decided to do this year was just not prune any suckers um, and just kind of let it be, but also try to train it up the trellis at the same time. I would like to point out that these cucumbers have been my favorite so far this summer. They're called Poniente F1 from Territorial Seed Company. I think that's how you say it. But while I've grown quite a bit of cucumbers, this one has produced the most so far. And that right here is called White Wonder. Those have been fun growing this year too. I didn't even know that was there. Look at that. All oh, the surprises the garden gives you. It gives such joy. I can't even explain it. I just love it so much. I didn't even see that there either. Look at that little guy. Now, I will say, last year I got a number of cucumbers that looked like this. They were just balls, almost like you know, either a little bit longer or just like a, a softball almost. Like this one has it. And I think that's due to a pollination issue. Even that one right there. But I've also gotten longer ones, normal size ones last year, but this year's done a lot better. And I honestly think it's because I'm not pruning as much. It could also be the variety. Look how big this leaf is. It could also be the variety. So I'm experimenting. We'll see how it goes. Now, this plant right here is, I might be butchering how to say this, Mulin. I purchased this as a start from Azure, and the only reason I purchased this is for medicinal reasons. I'm freeze drying the leaves. I cut them up and I freeze dry them, and they're supposed to be good for respiratory issues. And then this bag right here is my lavender, and this is some more lavender. And then this beautiful wild thing is lemongrass. Now, if anybody has recipes or ways they use lemongrass, please leave them in the comments below. I'd really love to know what you use lemongrass for. My goal is just to grab some of the leaves and freeze dry them, and then use them however I think would be best for my family. I will say they smell so amazing though.
Now, these two last pots are my chamomile. This one right here has just been hanging off, but it's been the one that's been producing the most flowers for me. And the reason why I actually have these between the two beds is so that the sun wouldn't beat down too heavy on them so that I could possibly harvest a few of the chamomile flowers and the same with those plants as well. And then this tomato plant that's coming up out of the ground is a volunteer tomato plant. And I put a stick on there for support and I'm gonna see if it gives me any fruit. I was really excited to see that and I don't have the heart to pull it out, so we'll see what happens. I don't see any fruit on there yet, but we'll see what happens. And then this wood bed is the other wood bed that I planted all the other green beans for my last video. I love the idea of square foot gardening because I like to use as much of my space as possible to grow as much food as I can. And these popped up pretty quickly. And my goal is to support each of these green beans. These are bush green beans. I'm gonna support each one with a bamboo stick. Now, just to kind of give you an idea, I've got one of the cucumber plants just chilling right here, and I'm just letting it be. I really wanna see what happens this year with just not pruning anything. Um, I feel so far that it's giving me a lot more cucumbers. It could also be that I uh, planted more cucumbers on the other side, but I'm just going with it this year and I'm going to not stress myself about it either. So we'll see what happens. And then this next bed, is all basil and pepper again. Now, here's something pretty interesting. Last year, I put a trellis on the side here and I had Connecticut Wonder Green Beans. If you've never grown them, they're like a white green bean. They're very delicious and they're fun. But I think one of the seeds fell and it's growing again. I don't have the heart to yank it out. So I've got to figure out something. I can maybe put a little trellis here because that's just how I am. But I thought that was so cool that it started growing out of this bed. Now, the same with this bed, I put basil all the way around and two pepper plants in each square like I did the first bed. Now these, I did put up the bamboo stick. I just put it in between the pepper plant. Well, I mean in between both pepper plants and then I just tied both of them on there. This is a total experiment this year. Again, I like to maximize my space and plant as much as possible and see if the pepper plants can support each other if I just put two in each square. So far it's been, it's been going very well. So this one right here is a jalapeno. Now these basils, I wanna say are the large leaf Italians. I forget, but they are amazing and they grow so fast. And then these little guys right here are my dwarf basils. I've shared this before in previous videos, but I love these little basils because they're great in you know, pizza recipes, spaghetti recipes, or just to throw into something. They're just, they're tiny, they're small, and they're, they're easy to grow. And again, we've got a lot of little blossoms. I mean, these shot up in the last week or two with all this rain. So I'm very excited. I have fertilized a little bit too, but with the rain, it has helped tremendously. And then here at the end of this other metal bed, I have another dahlia plant. And this one is more of the lighter purple color. Now this bed, they're all my favorite beds, but this one is definitely 
one of my very favorites because these tomatoes did so well last year that I planted them again. They're the Roma Martino tomatoes. And what I did on the outside of all these, this bed is I did Tulsi holy basil because not only do we make an amazing tea, which I just put up a short on how to make um, basil tea, but it brings in so much pollinators, which helps with the growth of the tomatoes. So let me give you some glimpses of all the tomatoes. now. They haven't turned color, but oh my gosh, there's so much fruit. Now, my goal with all of these tomatoes is to either preserve pizza sauce or spaghetti sauce and also salsa. I made a ton of salsa last year, but my family and I consume a lot of pizza sauce because we make homemade pizzas on Saturdays and we do love our spaghetti. And some of the tomatoes on the bottom do look like they have blossom end rot, but it's really the flower bud that's still stuck to the bottom of the tomato. And each of these tomato plants, they are tied up against either a six foot long wood post or my eight foot bamboo sticks. And so far in my experience, I have preferred the bamboo sticks more. I have also tried to make sure that I prune off leaves that look like they have disease forming, as well as making sure not too many leaves are touching each other, especially because it's been raining a lot. But I noticed last year I had a tendency to be prune happy, so I try not to. I also have not taken off suckers this year because just like the cucumbers, I really want to see how much fruit I could grow without taking off the suckers. And I do understand that the point of taking the suckers off is to allow the other fruit to form better, but I'm trying something new this year and so far I'm liking what I'm seeing. Now, the majority of all these tomatoes in all of these squares are the Roma Martino, but right here at the end, right here that are not in the squares, let's see if I can get it better. Those are Bush Roma tomatoes, and those two, look at, they are producing so well. I'm so excited. And then if you can see that tomato right there, let me see if I can get a zoom in. I have a few right there. I have a few beef steaks in there too. So I'm excited because I'm growing those. I'm growing watermelon beef steaks as well as beef steaks. Look at all those tomatoes. And then right here on the trellis are Kentucky Wonder Green Beans. I grew these last year. They did very well. Of course, I had a whole bunch of Japanese beetles that ate the leaves a ton. But I, you could see they're all planted right here. I made sure there was no bunches of leaves everywhere so that I had airflow, no disease issues. But I noticed this year that the Japanese beetles didn't attack them as much as they did last year, but these little tiny stink bugs, and I can't think of the name of them, were all over the stem of the plant, like right here. I haven't been seeing them as much, and I'm kind of wondering if that's why I haven't seen green beans, but I have a feeling they're gonna all start producing very quickly. Now in this bed, I also along the edge have the Roma bush tomato plants, just like I have on this edge right here. And then in the squares are San Marzano and watermelon beefsteak tomatoes. 
And of course, along the edges, you guessed it, it's basil, except this one is a lemon basil. And with lemon basil, I also make our tea out of the lemon basil. With lemon basil and toasty holy basil, you want it to flower. This is okay if it flowers. Basil like this, you don't want it to flower because then it's gonna go to seed. So that's, that's the difference between those two. But this just smells amazing, just like the Tulsi Holy Basil. And then on the corner here, I grew for the first time this year an Autumn Beauty Sunflower and it's just starting to sprout or just starting to bloom. Look at how pretty that is. So the same with the other side, there's just a ton of tomatoes that are coming out, just waiting for them to start to turn color so that I can harvest them. I know it might be a little hard to see all those clusters of tomatoes because they're so green and they're blending into the leaves, but there are so many bunches of tomatoes on every one of these plants and I'm looking forward to them all turning red. And please comment below and tell me how are your tomatoes growing in your garden this year and have you harvested them yet? Are they still green like mine? I'd love to know. If you have a favorite recipe for pizza sauce or spaghetti sauce, please share with me. I'd really love to, to get some different type of recipes and try different types of spaghetti sauces. And then these bamboo sticks that you see, they're eight feet tall. And I really do like them. I purchased these last year. I do like these for the support. They did very well last year. I like them better than these wood sticks that I purchased, I wanna say from Home Depot last year. I mean, they're both good, but I do prefer the bamboo sticks. They've been um, the best for the garden so far. And then this metal bed has all of my Cherokee purple tomatoes. You guessed it, surrounded with lemon basil. But this one I'm looking forward to harvesting as well because there's so much fruit on these tomato trees. Now, because it has been raining, I've been trying to make sure that I prune any extra leaves that don't need to be there just because I wanna make sure that no disease starts to form. Now, I will say, I'm not sure if I got some of the tomato plants mixed up because I thought everything was Cherokee purple, but these are kind of growing like a pear size. So that might be possible that I mixed up some plants this year because I overplanted tomato plants and I might have got them mixed up. But this one, this one I'm super excited about. Look at how big this one is. It's huge. I'm super excited to harvest that one. I would like to point out that these two by eight beds have been a lot easier to manage than the larger four by six beds. Not that I don't like the larger beds, but it has been easier for me to maneuver through the plants and to manage my tomato plants in this size bed, especially when it comes to pruning.
And then these four bags at the end are all cherry tomatoes. And I did the same thing with these as I did the cucumber plants. I'm trying not to prune as much to see if I could get a lot more fruit than I did last year. Last year when I planted some of my cherry tomatoes in these large grow bags with the tomato cages, it did very well and produced a lot of fruit for us, which is why I'm doing it again this year. Now in each of these bags, I planted basil in the middle. And I think what I am gonna do from now on is let it grow as tall as a tomato plant, depending on if I don't need to harvest the basil at all, because this one I let grow as tall as the tomato plant. You can see it's right here. The basil has gotten that tall. And so far this one has had no tomato horn issues. Now I haven't had tomato hornworms recently, but in the other beds, I had a few tomato hornworms. And so I wanted to experiment with this one. And so far I'm really liking it. So I may do it again next year. And I know it's hard to see all of the fruit because a lot of it's so green still, but there is a ton of clusters everywhere as you can see. I may even change my garden tours to every other week because there's so much growth and change almost on a daily basis it seems like. And then this metal bed has watermelon beefsteak tomatoes in the middle and you guessed it again basil on the outside so these tomato plants had some white fly issues a couple of weeks back and i sprayed it with some neem oil a little too strong and it killed some of the plants back and so i was a little bit concerned that the tomato plants weren't going to grow but they're now starting to grow a lot more and so this one's kind of got a slow start, but I'm actually kind of glad that it does because now once those tomatoes are ready to harvest, then these will be ready later. So that way it doesn't all come at one time. I really think with all the rain and I added some fertilizer to these tomato plants, it has really helped the health of them growing back again. So I'm excited. And on this corner as well, we have a pot of dahlias. This is the darker purple color. I have a large pot and then I have a small pot. And you're gonna see rocks in various spots. I like to use them from my property and because everything's on a slope, it kind of helps to level off some of the pots. And instead of purchasing something to help level it off, I'd rather just use the resources on my land first. And then this bed right here also has basil on the surrounding perimeter. And these tomato plants are Kellogg's. This is the first time I'm growing Kellogg's, just like it's the first time I'm growing the beefsteak and watermelon beefsteak. But I also made the mistake of spraying a little too strong of a neem oil on these plants. But as it's been raining and I fertilize a little bit, these two are starting to grow more and I'm starting to see some fruit. So I'm super excited about that. 
I would like to add real quick that I have enjoyed growing the different varieties of basil as well as learning different ways of using basil from making pesto to delicious homemade basil tea. And I would encourage you always experiment and make up your own fun recipes at home. And then these two bags right here are also Bush Roma tomatoes. And I put a basil with these as well. And I'm starting to see a lot of fruit. And this beautiful green plant is my comfrey. This is a perennial and I specifically purchased this because I learned that you can make fertilizer from the leaves. Plus there are wonderful medicinal uses for this as well. And then these two tomato plants in these bags right here is the Brandywine Red and Yellow Blend with some basil. And this one is the 42 day tomato. Now this whole line of bags are some of my favorite plants because they're all of my peppers that I overwintered and I've gotten all of my first peppers from this season. I think they're completely worth overwintering and I do plan to do it again. And you can see there's a whole bunch of fruit right here. I have already picked a bunch of bell peppers from this plant and now there's just a ton of blooms ready to grow some more. These right here are all of my poblano peppers, which I really enjoy cooking over the stove, especially on a cast iron with some ground beef. It's very delicious. And I've harvested quite a bit of these already. And these are my jalapeno plants. This is the lemon new mix, if I'm saying that correctly, where they start off green and they turn completely yellow. I just harvested a few on there because they needed to be harvested. But I'm just getting a ton of fruit and these I all overwintered. So while my peppers in these beds are starting to grow and I have harvested some from those as well, these that I overwintered gave me peppers right away. So for me, it's worth overwintering peppers. Now this whole area has become quite a jungle in trying to get through it. I planted and started way too many tomatoes this year, but I just don't have the heart to throw them away. So a lot of these are just cherry tomatoes, which is why they're all in the bags. And some of them are already changing color, but there's so much fruit on all of these trees. They're going to be ready to harvest really soon. So definitely be subscribed because as soon as all this starts to change color and they're ready for harvesting, I'm going to be giving a harvest video as well. And then some of these I use tomato cages right here. And then some of them, I use the bamboo stick. Now here's my elderberry tree. This I decided to grow in a bag because when I planted this, I wanna say it was last year, I was new to gardening. I really want to plant a whole bunch back there, which I think I'm going to. But so far this year, I've noticed a ton more growth. You can hear the thunder in the background, so I got to kind of hurry. But there's been a tremendous amount of growth of elderberries, of not elderberries, I'm sorry, the leaves and the branches. So I am super excited about that. But if you've grown elderberry, if you have any tips for me or anything that you want to share, please leave them in the comments below. I would really like to read them and learn from those that have grown elderberry a lot longer than me. Mm -hmm. 
Now, before I go in the back here, I'm gonna show you these bags right here. And each one of these are watermelons and that one is a pumpkin. I started my pumpkins and my watermelons a little bit late, but this is a little baby boo pumpkin plant. And we'll see if I get any. Last year, I wanna say I got a five pounder and I can't remember the variety, but it was beautiful. And so this one I thought would be fun to do little pumpkins this year. And then these are my watermelon plants. I have Crimson Sweet, I have Cali Sweet, I have Sugar Baby, and they're growing, so I'm excited. I saw a fruit already. It's a little baby one, so cute. So I'm hoping to get a couple of watermelons. I didn't do very well with watermelons last year, so we'll see. I'm not giving up. I'm gonna keep planting them every year. And then this trellis my husband made for me, so I decided to put the watermelon plants next to that as well as the pumpkins. Now for the back part of my garden. I just recently did a budget bucket video on this section of my garden. All of these buckets I got completely for free from my grocery store. And I explain how to do that in my video if you're interested. I'll leave a link below. But each one of these buckets has tomato plants. And some of them have basil. Uh, the other ones, they don't have basil, but I do plan to plant some because I did some starts a couple of weeks back and they're ready to transplant in here just to keep them protected for from pests. It doesn't keep it completely pest free, but it does help a lot. Now these I do need to tie up to the bamboo stick because they're getting tall on me. I just haven't had a chance, but I'll probably do that this week. There's gonna be a ton of fruit that comes off of all these tomato plants. Now the reason this one is a lot bushier than the other ones is because I planted this a few weeks before those because I was waiting to get all of those buckets for that video that I had mentioned earlier. But I'm excited because there's going to be a ton of fruit on these. And these are growing pretty fast too. So the next time I have my garden tour, you're going to see these are going to be full of fruit probably. Now in these large bags are my leftover tomato plants that I had. Some of them I have tomato cages in there, others I do not. I just purchased some and I already placed them in there since filming this video because they're going to soon grow so tall that they're going to need that support. Now, the rest of the bags that are back here are all different varieties of squashes. I started these a little later than I wanted to, and while I have grown squash in the past, I've never been one to get a large harvest of squash yet, so I'm hoping that I will get a decent harvest. And even though some of these plants are planted closer together than they should be, I'm okay with getting smaller size vegetables, especially because my husband and I are the only ones in the family that like squashes anyways. I also did get tomato cages for extra support for some of these, especially the spaghetti squash, but I'm also okay with them sprawling on the ground if they need to, which is why I have them back here.
And one of the problems I have always ran into with squash is having too many male flowers and not enough female flowers. If anyone has any tips when growing squash, I would love for you to leave a comment down below. That would be very much appreciated. And then these two right here, they don't look very pretty. In fact, this one looks like it completely has nothing on there, but it's gonna start growing more leaves on here. Our tomato plants that I overwintered. These were the first plants that I harvested some tomatoes for the year. So I wasn't sure how it was gonna go and the tomatoes tasted good. They were really delicious. So I might do it again this winter, I'm not sure. And then these four beauties are my lemon balms. I love these plants so much. It's in my mint harvest video. I harvest these, I freeze dry them. And then what I do is put them in my water and let it seep all day. And it just tastes so delicious. And the smell is just amazing. Now, this part of my garden is my driveway garden. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of everything that I'm growing because this video is already getting really long, but I'm just so eager to share and show all the growth that has been happening in my garden since the last tour. So I have green stalks, as you saw, all lined up, and a few bags over here by the chairs are my raspberries and my blueberries. And this one right here at the end is my strawberries. And then along the wall are a bunch of grow bags that I will show you here in just a minute. These two first green stalks are all of my sweet potatoes. I did plant them a little later than I wanted to, but I am hoping that I will get a good harvest. Some of the slips I purchased and some I started on my own. And surprisingly, these next two green stalks have been growing kale. I don't know how or why because it is a very hot summer, but they're growing and I'm happy about it. These right here are snapdragons and there's also echinacea flowers planted in here as well. And then these two green stalks are empty. I harvested my garlic from this and it did so well that I'm gonna replant my garlic in there. Now, the reason you see these is because I had cut them from the stump when they were done and they just literally grew again. So I might just save this for seed if it sprouts before I plant the garlic again. Now the next couple of green stalks are going to be all of my tomatoes and my basil. Most of it is Tulsi holy basil. That yellow tomato that you saw there was a cream sausage. It's my first time growing it, but they look absolutely delicious. And a lot of them I have tied up with either bamboo sticks or I'm using my green stalk planter supports. In some spots of these planters where the tomato plant didn't survive, I did plant bush cucumber plants as well as some bush green beans. And this last green stalk of my tomatoes has all of my determinate tomatoes, meaning that they're not going to get very large. And I also added a few bush cucumber plants in here as well.
And then these four green stalks all had my onions. I did a recent video on my onion harvest, so I'm leaving those empty for the next set of onions. And then these three bags are my cucumelons. Now, I've never grown these, but I will say this, I'm not growing them in these bags again because they're just vining everywhere. But these are so delicious and so fun. Let me see if I can find little fruits. Oh yeah, look at, look how cute they are. They're so tiny. I love them, they're so cute. Look at, there's more. They're so adorable. These are exciting. So next year I'm gonna give it its own space with a proper trellis. But so far I'm really liking the cucamelons. And then my very last green stalk here are my strawberries with my peppermint on top. We've gotten a pretty good amount of strawberries. I know next year I plan to give a lot more attention to my strawberries than I did this year, but I'm still getting blooms and some fruit that are trying to grow. And these little peppers are called Tabasco peppers. Now in this first bag, I replanted my Piccolini F1 cucumbers. These were doing so well and I had quite a bit of cucumbers in the beginning of like spring summertime, but I've been having a lot of white flight issues this year. So I had to pull them out and replant them. So I'm waiting for those to grow. And then these two, they look like they're kind of dying on me, but the problem is I had so much white flight issue early summer that I sprayed some neem oil, a little too strong of neem oil, and it really killed back some of the leaves. But what I've noticed is there's been a lot more regrowth and there's still cucumbers that are growing. So I'm just, I'm letting it be. And there's a ton of pollinators. Now this one looks like it didn't pollinate all the way, but I'm just letting it grow. I'm letting it do its thing. And so far, I've already harvested one cucumber off of this, and then there's one here. That one could probably be harvested now. And then I wanna say there was another one. Yeah, see, look it. And then there's another one right here. So I am kind of letting the cucumber plants do its thing this year versus last year. I definitely prune them heavily, and I don't wanna do that this year. And I'm noticing more production when I don't prune them as much. I don't know if you spotted, but there are cucumbers that are growing. And it's because I just left it alone. I just want it to do its thing this year. And even though I sprayed it too much with some neem oil, they're still giving me cucumbers. They're still growing. So I'm, I'm excited. I didn't do cucumbers last year in, in my bags with these, but I wanted to try them out and see if they would be something that would be worth doing. And so far I kind of do like it. So we'll have to see how this continues to grow through July and into August. And then in these two bags that I originally had my onions planted in, I decided to do some bushing green beans. And all I did was tie it to this bamboo stick for support. Now these, I wanna say that I just planted, oh, 618. I planted these on June 18th. So they should be giving me some green beans soon. And then when these are done, I'll just keep planting some more green beans until my frost comes so I can continue to harvest and then preserve as many green beans as possible. And this bag as well, I just harvested my leeks out of this bag. That was my last video but I put some bush green beans in here as well. These are the Antigua bush green beans. And then as soon as these grow a little bit taller, I will support them with some bamboo sticks. And also with this bag, I did some bushing cucumbers. These one are the bushing pickling cucumbers. And I figured this would be a perfect spot for them because they could grow up this trellis since they don't get that large. And then I just planted some every couple of inches from each other. And then in the middle here, I know you can't really see it because they're little baby sprouts, but there's dill in here. Now, these bags excite me the most because this is my turmeric, and then these two are my ginger. I did a video early on on planting these, and while my ginger completely took off, you can see how much it has grown. 
And this one right here, there's a little sprout right here. It just keeps growing. The turmeric wasn't doing anything. And so I went into the bag and I dug up the pieces. They weren't moldy or anything like that. And so what I did was I brought it inside and I started just leaving it in water and it finally started to root. And then I experimented with planting it and watering it. And I do plan to do a follow-up video to explain step-by-step -step on how they actually started to sprout. And when I did that, they started to sprout. So I'm super excited and I cannot wait to harvest these when they're ready. And then these two bags are also cucumbers. I had some really bad white fly issues in the early summer, so I had to pull them out and replant them. And instead of using those black trellises, I tried making a teepee out of the bamboo stick. And so far I've been really liking it. And then these two plants that look like a whole bunch of weeds are my asparagus. This is a first year one. This is a second year. You're supposed to have at least three years before you can start harvesting them. But they're perennial plants and they have not been high maintenance, at least in my opinion, they haven't. And I'm looking forward to establishing these plants so that I can harvest asparaguses. And then these last four bags on my retaining wall are my two lemons and my two limes. I've recently fertilized these and I've been seeing a lot of massive green growth. So I'm hoping for some buds so that we can get some lemons and some limes. I've also noticed that having mulch over my plants has really helped retain moisture as well as the health of the plant. Okay, so these plants right here are my raspberries and my blueberries, and I purposely put them here so that we could come and harvest whenever they're ready. Let's see, I know we just kind of harvested a few and there's not a whole lot left, but oh, there's some right here. And then this blueberry plant has been giving us so many blueberries. We just harvested some yesterday, so you're not gonna see any ripe. I see one ripe, I think, over there. But it has given us a tremendous amount of blueberries. And I wanna say this one is called Powder Blue. It is such a beautiful, smooth, very juicy, lovely blueberry. And I love that you can grow them in grow bags. I was planning to grow more this year in some grow bags, but I just never did. So I probably will next year. And then this blueberry plant is called the Prince Blueberry. And it's funny because this one last year gave us way more blueberries than the Powder Blue last year, but there's been a lot of growth on it. So I don't know, we'll have to see. Hopefully next year, it'll give us a whole lot more blueberries. Now, these last plants are my herbs individually planted in grow bags in my metal carts. And the reason for that is in case there is disease, I can treat each plant correctly without it affecting the other ones. And it doesn't look as bushy right now because I did just harvest these. So thanks for stopping by and watching me give an entire tour of my garden in the backyard. Gardening has been one of those skills that I've greatly enjoyed learning, but also become very passionate about for many reasons. One of which I love the idea that I can come out here and just pick produce for my family to feed them. That has been so rewarding in so many ways. So I hope that this encouraged you and inspired you. Thanks for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Bye.